I would like to share you the outcome data of the registry for the BioMove 3D, the latest clinical evidence from that clinical program. And I would highlight the uh, registry here, which was conducted in 23 sites within Europe, um, was organized as a prospective registry with a follow up of three years. The, four, uh, the one year data are so far complete, and it's a pleasure now to show you these uh, outcome data. So, the primary endpoint um, of this um, registry are typical endpoint for a registry. So, 30 day clinical event uh, adjudicated safety endpoint that major amputation or clinical driven uh, TLR. And in terms of uh, effectiveness at 12 months, freedom from clinical driven TLR. You can see here that of these 507 patients which were included within this registry, um, yeah, it's a real world registry, 24% of the patients had a critical limb ischemia, rather for four to six, 38% had a moderate to severe calcification um, using the PAX score, so two or four, and 50% of the lesion were concomitantly treated with DCB. This is an aspect which Sala already mentioned, and, and I will highlight this a little bit more in, in a second. When we compare the uh, lesion length and standard segment length um, of the MIMIC 3D registry with the already shown RCT data and the MIMIC 2 data, yeah, it's obviously that uh, more complex lesions and longer stents were implanted here. So the lesion length within the registry was 127, point, uh, 127 millimeter, the standard segment length 131 millimeter. So we had sicker patients, longer and more complex lesions. And um, the biomic stent use was a 50-50 primary or bail out to DCB. So a typical real world registry, <clears throat> which might give some more information how to use this stent in a daily routine practice. So looking at the primary endpoints, first of all, 30 day safety, there was a 99% freedom from major adverse events, just two TLRs at day 13 and 18 and two amputations at day three and eight. There were uh, these uh, amputations were um, in patients with border fort five, the two deaths which are um, shown here were associated to the procedure itself. On one hand side, so it was a closure system failure, and on the other hand, leukemia associated. Regarding 12 months effectiveness endpoint, you see that 89% um, freedom from CDTLR was reported. I think a very good outcome data for that complex uh, lesion and complex patient situation. Um, I would, as already mentioned, highlight a little bit the combination with drug-coated balloon. And you can see, um, um, looking at this subgroup analysis, freedom from CDTLR 12 months using DCB with the stent or no DCB with the stent, there was no significant difference. So 89.5% for the group by mimics d with DCB, 88.5% for the group without DCB. Um, a lot of uh, yeah, questions, of course, occur with that. Um, maybe the lesion characteristic or patient demographics can have an influence here. We are still in the analysis, uh, analysis process of giving more answers here, but I think it's very interesting to mention that. And um, yeah, we need to wait some follow up data, I think, for the second and third year to really um, answer if. Um, there is an impact of a DCB with the uh, biomimic or not. Um, so a propensity matched analysis um, would, would make sense, of course, and um, therefore we also performed um, propensity matched analysis for a calcification. You could see here just in summary that there was no difference between no and mild calcification versus moderate and severe calcification. Also very important point, I think, that calcification itself has had no impact in terms of re-intervention. And also there was <clears throat> no difference between the stent length less than 100 millimeter versus 
more than 100 millimeter also very interesting to see so when we uh, summarize these uh, results from the mimic 3d um, uh, registry the 12 months freedom from CDLTR was 89% in a very challenging real world population. The rate of CDLTR was independent of the concomitant DCB use, lesion calcification, and stent length. Uh, it will be very interesting to see the outcome here for the second and third year. MIG 3D data contribute real world experience to the evolving database, supporting the, the reporting value of swelling flow in the binding 3D stent. And um, of course, we are now in the phase of a second and third year analysis. So in general conclusion, the stand imparts a helical shape onto the tier wall to endure swelling flow, as we could already see in the previous presentation and heard a lot about that. The RCT showed superiority of the biomimic 3D stand over a straight stand. The IDDE study and the 3D post-market residue show very good performance compared to drug eluding device. So there is an ongoing discussion now how really to perform interventions and with which device. Outcomes are irrespective of lesion complexity and achieved uh, without the need for lesion preparation, also very important. So in total conclusion, it means the 3D stand reduced the burden of reintervention for the patient and the healthcare system, therefore. Typical case example, and Thomas, we just discussed about um, distal SFA and uh, popliteal intervention. You could see here we performed a P1 intervention just a couple of days ago, implanted um, 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 by MIMI 3D stand. And it will be interesting to see how this stand here performs in the popliteal artery. With that, I would like to thank you for <clears throat> your attention regarding this presentation.